OK, what are some strategies around time management that really work in your experience? For me, the first thing I would recommend is make sure you have a diary. In that diary, an academic diary can be really, really useful uh, because it starts in September and finishes in August rather than running from January to December. And in that diary, literally getting everything documented. When are your classes? When are assignments due? Putting in, even putting in time for yourself, allocating time in your diary for yourself, for self-care, depending, as Mirren was saying, like some topics can be quite heavy. And if a topic is heavy, you do need to have some time to yourself. Um, I would work with to-do to -do lists. They can be, I have found like, you know, trying to prioritize what needs to be done each week down and breaking it down to each day and then using your pen or I find sticky notes are quite handy electronically if you don't want to do a paper copy and there's ways to use uh, strike throughs to delete stuff so you can see the progress you're oh gosh someone's <laughs> in it. I have the paper ones as well and I also have an electronic version that I can and I have posted all over my my screen so that can be really useful um I find that um allowing yourself say allocating yourself specific times to work on a an area and not getting absorbed in it that three hours later you discover you have three hours done because our brains don't function in that way. It's very important to have breaks, to have routine as part of your day. So like if you're a person, for me, I get up very early in the morning. So I find my first thing out of bed has to be to take my dog for a walk. And that's my routine. Walk, do my exercises, and then get my breakfast and then work. So whatever routine, you find out what routine works best for you, you yourself. Like you have to, there's, it's sort of, there's no, my routine might not work for somebody else if they're up till one or two in the morning, whereas I'm up from five or six in the morning. So you work out what's best for yourself. Um, the, it's very important around time management, especially if you've a paper to write, that you, for me personally, that I start early. And this is where that helps with procrastination as well, because um, if you start early, it's never initially going to make sense on a paper. You're not going to have a, you might do a mind map beforehand, but then as you're reading, you might find other ideas that you want to include in certain sections. So for an essay with regards to time management, I sort of find that, Start writing early, read resources. So read the assignment brief a number of times beforehand with the view that when I'm doing reading, then I take that stuff on board to remind me of oh, TMA or assignment, assignment. Yeah, that might be assignment. And you're sort of you want to cut down on time. Mirren, would you like to kind of so just the yeah strategies around time management that you have found it because there's loads of them out there but what in your experience what has really genuinely worked? Yeah so I I would agree with kind of a lot of the points that were raised so far that Kira brought up so I won't go back on them but I think possibly the most helpful thing for me was let's say even just in relation to the PhD so I kind of saw the end date and then I worked back uh, and had, you know, quite specific dates for when chapters were, were due in. So just in relation to kind of, you know, the use of a diary. And it's interesting because I think, you know, let's say if my mother was here, she'd fall around the place laughing at me being so specific about dates because it's not a natural thing for me at all. But I can genuinely say that it's, what has got this PhD over the line. Can I just add one more point on that around the diary? I have found as well in my writing, it's always important to add extra time along with using the diary. So like you have in your dates, like so say if you think it's going to take two weeks to do something, allocating an extra week because the unexpected can arise. Definitely, yeah. You know, mm -hmm, yeah. 
Yeah, and um, I, I suppose undergrads, if we're looking at that, you know, this is this is for all students. I suppose a lot of students they won't have like you're when you're talking about PhD level, you have that little bit of kind of um, more autonomy, I suppose, in terms of setting dates. Yeah. They might not have that, but it's still those principles are the same. What is the end date and work backwards and and use things like a diary. So and that might be it might be a, a tangible one, but there's also obviously if you're using Outlook, you've got your calendar in there. If you're using Google Drive, your calendar there, link them all together. I would always have it always digital because I will lose a diary. And um, so that's why I'd be such a, a supporter of, of like technology options. And the same with the to do lists. And there's loads of them in there in our in this topic and in our digital skills topic. We have recommendations around to do lists um, that are online and that can be integrated with other things and they can be so useful. And I think in terms of procrastination as well, we've talked we talk a little bit about the Pomodoro technique and I would be a great advocate for that in terms of just getting you past the blank page, like literally just sit and do 25 minutes and don't fall down the research hole doing so much reading. That you're putting off writing like even sometimes I'll, I'll just make myself just write what you already know on this mm. and see where you're at just to do something because like you say I think a lot of these strategies it is about like you said more it's not natural to you to be really organized with dates but sometimes we nearly need to like it's like carving something out of a rock sometimes trying to develop mm. these strategies because it is maybe going against the grain but once you once you kind of just find what's working for you or where the gaps are that you need to address, that can really help then in yeah. moving you forward. There was something that I thought was also helpful was that, well, I mean, again, of course, it depends on when assignments are given and all of this kind of thing. Uh, but I noticed, I, I kind of noted or something that I thought was helpful was after having a lecture that, you know, you might write a piece from that lecture, you know. Oh, you're back. <laughs> I was just so excited that I flew off with my, <laughs> with my with my next tip. But what I just had wanted to say was, perhaps in that regard, if you you know it is, you are kind of an undergraduate, perhaps it might be helpful that you know what you write is, you know, some kind of a short summary or something like that of the lecture that you've just done, because chances are. In that content will be something, um, you know, for whenever you get the assignment. So that might also be something. Too. Absolutely, and it saves you time. Then later, we have that. I think in our note taking section, in which is in okay. our next topic, we talk a little bit about that. The taking notes is it's not just in class writing the notes; it's the before and after the lecture, and that's what cements it and helps us to process it. And like you say, you can draw on it then when it comes to. It saves you a lot of time in the long run, even though at the time you think, I don't have time for that. It actually it's. False economy to think that you, you would be better to do it. 